very exciting subject tonight, and it's as close as stepping out your front or back door and looking up, space. Point of departure is this book called The Red Limit, which means the edge of space, and with us is Timothy Ferris, the author, native Floridian, born where in Florida, Tim? Here in Miami. Born in Miami, raised mm -hmm. in Miami? Yeah. You're a Mi native Miamian then? Yeah. Why'd here. you leave us? You went to teach in Brooklyn now? And well, I liked New York, and uh, it's hard to say. I first went to New York when I was eight, and always liked it, and uh, I get back here all the time. It's Great. A beautiful Good. place. Now, we're talking here about space, and it's such an enormous subject. Uh, where can we begin rationally in a short amount of time to, to tell people the most possible about space and what this book's about? Well, one way is to say that here we are living at an epical period in our own history. Beginning of this century, we had only the vaguest idea of how nature was built on the large scale, where we as a planet were. We were a little like primitive peoples who uh, lived in a village and knew a few miles around the village and, and nothing else of the world. We've come to understand that we live on a planet, but we're only beginning to see where that planet stands on the broader scheme of nature. Mm -hmm. In the uh, few decades that have uh, gone by since that time, we've learned about the existence of galaxies, something of the overall behavior of the universe, and we've begun to take the first steps out into this broader uh, Let's reality. define some, some basic terms. What, is the, mm -hmm. what does galaxy mean? A galaxy is a huge, what you might call a city of stars, about a hundred billion different stars. We don't know how many of them with, with planets, perhaps a great many. And we live out toward the, sort of in the suburbs of one part of our own galaxy, uh, carries us around and it's great sweep every 250 million years and uh, the, all the processes that went into creating ourselves and our world uh, also went into creating all of these uh, billions of other worlds in this galaxy. Well, how, how many galaxies are there? About uh, something about uh, on the order of the same number as the stars in the galaxy makes it easy to remember around a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. What kinds of things have we discovered lately? The, the Mariner mission to Mars, any extraordinary discoveries as a result of that mission? Well, there are a number of discoveries from both the Mariner and the um, uh, uh, Viking landings on Mars. Uh, the main one of which I would say is the complexity of another world. Here is a whole planet with its own seasons, its own way of conducting its affairs, if you will. There's more land area on Mars than there is on the Earth. Mm. Uh, great mountains, snow-capped mountains and valleys, a lot of places that I think one day explorers will want to go hiking. And if you uh, look at pictures of Mars, we have one here today, uh, it's, it's not an uninviting looking place. Now that's the surface of Mars. This is one of the first photos taken by Viking. And you can see that um, it, it has a certain stark beauty of its own. This is one of the dullest places on the planet Mars. It was chosen for that reason, for safe landing. It's more or less as if you land in the middle of the Mojave Desert on Earth. Mm -hmm. But there's that horizon, that uh, rather warm-looking sky. And you, as Bruce Murray, the director of Jet Propulsion Laboratory, said the day this picture came in, you sort of want to take a walk on over that horizon and see what. Now, how long did it take uh, Viking to get to Mars? Oh, about two years. Uh, Traveling how fast? Oh, uh, probably be on the order of uh, 80, 100,000 miles an hour, something like two that. Two years. That gives, and that's not very far. No, it's not very fast either, though. It's a, <laughs> the mission was done on the cheap, and uh, so you don't buy as much rocket power. You can get to Mars in about six months if you want to. Uh, okay. Put a little more power. We have some it. more slides. Let's look at them now. Sure. Now, what's this? This is a this is a field of stars in our own neighborhood of the galaxy. Um, every one of these stars is a sun like ours. You can take thousands of pictures like this. Each one of the dots we see there is a sun like our sun. Yes, yes. And this is only a tiny part of our own neighborhood of the galaxy. We have as yet no idea of uh, what planets may circle these suns or what people may live on them. Uh, there is a means for us to begin to find out, and that's to start listening with radio telescopes for signals from beings other, in other worlds, which we are not doing at the present. Uh, this next one is a globular cluster, as it's called. That's about 100,000 stars. There are quite a few of these clusters. And they're interesting places because they formed very early, so those heavy metals I was talking about, gold and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, do not make up part of their world. So if there are societies there, they're probably pastoral societies without high technology, 
more sort of the way we think of ancient Greece. You can, you, can, can you see this with the naked eye at all if you step outside and there's, look up? There's one called a 47 Tucane that you can see from Miami because we're sufficiently far south, way down on the southern horizon, uh, a few, a couple of months right around uh, this time of year. And if you take a pair of binoculars, you'll see it down there. It looks like a glowing beehive. Beautiful object. Wow. The next uh, slide shows the remnant of an exploded star. All of that gas that you see there has been thrown out from a erupting star. And this, which used to be thought of as sort of an accident, proves to be part of the process by which worlds like our own are produced. And we're, all, we're all put together as a result of these uh, yeah. interactions of stars. Is there any hard scientific evidence of life in outer space? Not yet. And the main reason is that almost nothing is being done to find out about it. Uh, the evidence, the circumstantial evidence, continues to mount. But uh, to find out if there really is life, we should begin to, to search for it. And the way that, the best way to search for it is to start to use our large radio telescopes a little bit of their time to listen for intelligent signals from other, other worlds. Now, if, they, if those signals are passing through this room right now, we would not know it because no one's listening for it. What do you just personally think? Do you think there are other planets, other galaxies with people, living cultures, civilizations like we know today on Earth? Well, the, the numbers are so high that, that it seems that almost anything that's possible will exist somewhere. A hundred billion times a hundred billion is a, is a large number. It does seem improbable that we would be the only populated planet in all of that incredible space. Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem reasonable, does it? It seems, it seems, it seems awfully egotistical. Yes. I, yes. I suspect we have lots of companions, and, but we haven't yet begun to try to make contact. We're just sort of beginning to open our eyes, get a sense of where we are. The book, again, is called The Red Limit. It's about exploring the edges of our universe. And I think you've heard just from hearing Tim talk, it's, it's about something that's so incredible. It's hard to imagine, but worth trying, I think. Tim, thanks very much for being Thank with you. us. We'll be right back.